Some days ago I received this package in my letterbox from ST Microelectronics for the Neapolis Innovation Summer Campus. So let's see what is the content. Once opened the box, we found this welcome leaflet with a scannable QR code to keep us updated about the campus. There is also a big spoiler about what is inside the box, so for now I will not read it. After removing this particular and nice packaging, we have a bag with some components, the USB cable to connect the board to the computer, and here we go, this is the board, an STM32 Nucleo 64. Now it's time to see which components they have sent to me, checking the list provided. So let's do this second unboxing. The first component drawn out is... An OLED display, very useful if we want to show clearly some information. Let's move on quickly. The second one is a joystick, that could be used to drive a robotic arm or well, as a joystick in our custom console. After we have a buzzer, that I remember for waking up in the middle of night everyone when my PC got a memory fault. So we could employ it in a small alarm system. Next is the rotary encoder, let's check it on the list. This is the breadboard to test our circuits. There is also some dupons to connect the pin header of the board to the breadboards. Obviously, some resistor can't be missing, and there is also a photoresistor that could be used to monitor the light in an environment. For example, we could turn on this really big RGB LED in case of dark. Perfect, we are almost done. Here we have three push buttons, and to conclude, a pair of IR LED, one to transmit and the other one to receive. Now, let's take a general look at the board. The installed microcontroller is a STM32F401RET6 with 64 pins. It has an ARM Cortex M4 processor at 84 MHz and it is provided of 512 KB of flash memory and 96 KB of SRAM. It's a powerful board, but it's just the beginning. Indeed, thanks to these two connectors, we can use every Arduino shield. For example, I have mounted this Arduino motor shield to drive two motors, and it works perfectly. Obviously, you could also use this expansion board, provided by ST itself. As you may notice, there are two other connectors, called ST Morph Extension Pin Header, that give us the access to all the pins of the microcontroller. Another analogy with Arduino is the LED connected to the pin 13, but this board has something more a built-in push button that could be used by the developer. Taking a general look, we can see that the board is split in two sections. In fact, the top section is the ST links that allow us to program the bottom part, that is the actual development board. We can program the board with USB Type-A cable or after removing the CN2 jumpers with an external programmer through these pins. Beside the USB connector, we have a three-color LED that indicates the state of the board. According to the datasheet, it will be red when the board is powered, green when the board is successfully programmed, or orange when there are some communication issues. You can find this and other information about the board on its datasheet, but be careful, when you search it, check also the reference board number. Opening the microcontroller datasheet instead, we can start to see in detail its characteristics. It includes an RTC, a 12-bit ADC and up to 11 different timers. In particular, we have up to 6 16-bit timers, two 32-bit timers up to 84 MHz, two watchdogs timers and a 6-tick timer. For the external communication, we have up to 3 users, 3 I2C, 4 SPI and 1 USB 2.0. To power up the board, we can simply use the USB, and through the jumper JP1, we can limit the current to 100 mA, instead of standard 300 mA. There is also a LED here, that indicates that the board is powered, and 5 volts are available on these two pins. This LED also indicates if the USB provides enough current to the board. In fact, if it's turned on, the nuclear and its shield can consume a maximum of 300 mA. If the PC is not able to provide the required current, the LED remains turned off. 
In such case, and if your system needs more than 300 milliamps, it's mandatory to use an external power supply. To do that, we need to move the jumper JP5 from U5V to E5V and remove the jumper JP1 and connect a battery pack or power supply between 7 volts and 12 volts. Obviously, we are still able to program the board through the USB. In addition, according to the microcontroller datasheet, we can set three different low power modes to save battery life. There is a last jumper to check, the JP6 or IDD. If we remove it, we can connect to its pins an ammeter to measure the microcontroller consumptions. Now that we know the main characteristics of the board, let's see what we can do with it. To program it, we can use many different IDE, such as Kibi Studio that can be integrated in Eclipse or ARM Embed Online. In this example, we will use Embed to turn on and off the built-in LED with the built-in push button. Let's start connecting the board to the computer. The Nucleo will be automatically recognized and from the opened window we can click on this link. In this page we can find some information about our board, such as features and the pinouts. What we need now is to go below and click on link from this yellow box. From here we can download the ST-Link driver that will allow our PC to correctly program the board. To do this we need to compile a form and wait for an email that will send us the link to complete the driver download. Once the archive has been downloaded we can extract the files and open one of these two files based on our system to install the driver. Now we can go back to the previous page and open the compiler clicking on the link at the top right of the page. Here we can select our board, a template and the project name. In this case I will choose my nuclear board and an empty project, but to start the program we need the main CPP file. To do that right click on our project folder name and create the file. If you want you can also choose or add other board clicking on this button. Again, here we have some information about the board and first of all a quick access to the pinouts. Clearly, you can also start a serial communication checking the COM port in Device Manager. By the way, it's time to write some line of code, but before, if we choose an empty template, we need to import the embed library. Here you can search every library compatible with the board or shield. Now we can write our program to turn on and off the LED using the built-in push button. You can save the project clicking on this button, or you can also click on build only to check if there are errors. To download the BIM file instead, you can just click on compile and save it on PC. Right click on the downloaded file and copy it in the root of the board. As you can see, the red LED starts flashing and here we go. The LED is green, so the board is correctly programmed and we can test our code clicking on the blue button. Okay, we did it, but this is a basic project. You can do much more with this board like this university project that I made some years ago, where I use a Bluetooth to drive with my phone a smart car and play four different war games. For example, here we have the king of the hill where with your car you need to shoot the enemy with the red button to block it for a while and stay on a black piece of paper for some second to win the game. To conclude, if you need a complete control on the hardware, I strongly suggest to use stm 32 Cube MX. To know more, you can watch the Getting Started video on the ST YouTube channel. So that's all for today, if you want to support me, you can download my free electronics app Tully. In case of question, write them in comment section. Don't forget to light up the like button, share and subscribe and always expand your knowledge and see you in the next video.